We're now going to talk about integrals over surfaces. So let S be a parameterized surface in R3. So this is described by a function R from D to R3, where D is the parameterizing domain, which we think of as being in the UV plane. We could use different letters, but we usually use U and V to denote the parameters of our surface. And the function R takes each point in the UV plane to some point in three-dimensional space. And all of these different points together form our surface S. I now want to introduce two different kinds of integrals over the surface S. So the first kind is denoted by the double integral over S of f ds, where f is a real valued function on the surface. And this is called integration with respect to surface area. Um, this notation is not the best because here the letter s is used two different ways. Here the letter s on the bottom of the integral indicates that we're integrating over the surface s. While this s in the ds, that's supposed to indicate integration with respect to surface area. It's supposed to be related to the d lowercase s that indicates integration with respect to arc length. However, if it were up to me, I would call this da instead of ds. And in fact, some books do that, so this notation varies from one book to another. I'm using the ds notation here just to be consistent with the course textbook. Okay, and now the second kind of integral over a surface is the double integral over s of capital F with an arrow dot ds with an arrow. So this is where f is a vector field, a three-dimensional vector field, whose domain includes the surface S, so it's defined on S. Um, and this is, well, it has some relation to the integral of f dot dr over a curve that we talked about before. However, there's a crucial difference, which we'll get to um, when we discuss this integral. Okay, now let me first define integration with respect to surface area, because this is the more straightforward of the two. So we define the double integral over s of f ds to equal the double integral over the parameterizing domain d of f of r of uv times the absolute value of ru cross rv dA. And remember that this absolute value of ru cross rv is a magnification factor. So what it measures is if you take a little rectangle in the domain D, when you apply the map R to it, you get something which is approximately the parallelogram in the surface S. And the ratio of the area of this small parallelogram to the area of this small rectangle in the limit as the size goes to zero is equal to this magnification factor. So in particular, the double integral over s of 1 ds is the area of s. So that recovers the formula for the area that we saw before. Um, the more general physical interpretation is that if s is a sheet of some material with a mass density rho from s to r, then m equals the double integral over s of rho ds is the total mass of the sheet. You can also recover the center of mass of the sheet analogously to what we did before. So you take 1 over m, 
times the double integral over s of x rho comma y rho comma z rho ds, and that gives you the center of mass. Okay, so let's let's do an example of um, integration with respect to surface area. So let's calculate the double integral over s of y z ds. where s is given by the following parameterization. So x equals u times v, y equals u plus v, z equals u minus v, and u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to one. So the domain parameterizing the surface is the unit disk, where u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to one, and these are the equations that describe the surface. Now I'm not going to try to sketch that, let's just work out the integral. So first let's calculate the magnification factor. If we write the parameterization in vector form, it's r equals uv comma u plus v comma u minus v. So ru is v comma 1 comma minus 1, and rv is u comma Oh, sorry, R, RU has a plus one here. It's RV that has a minus one. So RV is U comma one comma minus one. Okay, so this minus sign comes for this minus sign over here. I was getting confused. It's hard to, when you do these things, the hardest part is to make your U's and V's look distinct so you don't get mixed up about which is U and which is V. Okay, and now the cross product, RU cross RV, So the first term is this times this minus that times that, which is minus 2. The second term is this times this minus that times that, which is u plus v. And the third term is this times this minus that times that, which is v minus u. So the absolute value of ru cross rv is the square root of 4 plus u plus v squared plus v minus u squared. And if I multiply this out, it simplifies a little bit to the square root of 4 plus 2 times u squared plus v squared. So that's our magnification factor, and now we can write down the integral. So the double integral over s of yz ds is the double integral over the domain of what? So first I have to write y and z in terms of u and v. So I use the parameterizing equations here. So y is u plus v and z is u minus v. And then I put in the magnification factor which is the square root of 4 plus 2 times u squared plus v squared dA. Okay so here this is y, this is z, and this is the magnification factor. Okay, now we can multiply this out to get u squared minus v squared, and that allows us to split the integral into two parts. So by d, by the way, I, I should have said is, is um, the unit disk, so I'm denoting this by d. All right, so I get the double integral over d of u squared times the square root of 4 plus 2 times u squared plus v squared dA minus the double integral over d of v squared times the square root of 4 plus 2 times u squared plus v squared dA. Now if you'll look at these two integrals you'll notice that they look extremely similar. The only difference is that this u gets changed into v over here. Everything else is completely the same. Um, and in fact, there's a symmetry here. So you can do a change of variables to switch u and v. So there's a change of variables where u turns to v and v turns into u. 
and the integrand um, will so we'll turn one integrand into the other integrand. Um, and there's no multiple, there's no magnification factor because the Jacobian of vu with respect to uv is the determinant of 0, 1, 1, 0, which is minus 1. So the absolute value is 1. So the magnification factor is 1. And the domain d is symmetric under switching u and v. So if you switch which is u and which is v, the domain stays the same. So the upshot is that if you do this change of variables, then because the magnification factor is 1 and the domain d stays the same, this converts one integral into the other. So these two integrals that we're subtracting are equal, and their difference is 0. Okay, so that's another useful application of change of variables, by the way. If you have two integrals which look almost the same, then sometimes you can use change of variables to argue that their values are equal, and so that when you subtract them, they cancel out. OK, so that's integration over a surface with respect to surface area. And in the next lecture segment, we will discuss integration of a vector field over a surface.